Thank you. Just a second. Jean, tell me about this. Good evening and uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning to all of you who are listening from uh, all around. And uh, today we have a renowned uh, cloud physicist, Professor Alexander Kane from uh, in Institute of Earth Sciences, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. So uh, actually we have uh, had a very close interactions with Professor Kane and he is a, a great human being and a great scientist and his primary in research interests include cloud physics, theoretical microphysics, cloud aerosol interaction and tropical meteorology, hurricanes, and he also works on boundary layer physics. He is an author of a spectral microphysical scheme, a SBM model, which is also implemented in a WRF uh, model as a cloud microphysics scheme. And uh, he has published over 260 scientific papers and uh, four books. And uh, he has a recent book published on physical processes in clouds, and uh, I would, I would really actually the, today his talk is uh, very uh, on a very emerging topic, and uh, we would really look forward to hear from him today. And uh, I request Subrata, Dr. Subrata Kumar Das from the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology to introduce his talk. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> so today, many things, many things for yeah. this introduction, many thanks. Thank you. Thank you, madam. So today, Professor Kane will be talking about uh, formation of microphysical structure of convective clouds by internal cloud vortex dynamics. So that uh, he is going to present the mechanism of mixing and entrenchment and their effects on uh, microphysical structure of growing convective cloud. He used the semi-analytical approaches and very high resolution cloud model with spectral beam microphysics. Cloud motions he basically classified into the convective and stochastic turbulent motion using the wavelet approach. The characteristics of these motions he has evaluated and found that the turbulent motions are responsible for the formations of narrow interface zone near the cloud edges where gradient of liquid water content are high. Uh, further, he found that the convective scale movement which are mostly connected to the tornadal vortices originating at the top sections of the developing clouds produces dilutions of the cloud air at the larger distance from the cloud boundaries. And they found that these motions form radial profile of adiabatic fractions. Uh, they found further that uh, a strong dependence of the shape of the droplet size distributions on the adiabatic fraction using high frequency in situ measurement and uh, high resolution 10 meter uh, resolution LES model. So finally, they will show that the relationship between these re uh, results and the cloud representations in the convective parameterization scheme. With this uh, brief introduction about his talk, I welcome Professor Kane to deliver his lecture. Thank you, sir. So I can uh, start? Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your introduction. And now, uh, we will start. Uh, so, uh, this work is done uh, with uh, uh, close collaboration to uh, uh, several uh, uh, scientists uh, that uh, are listed here, and uh, I will refer uh, them uh, during my uh, lecture. Uh, so, uh, what is the uh, uh, motivation of this talk. First of all, its cumulus clouds play an important role in radiation and heat budget uh, of the atmosphere. Uh, many problems of uh, cloud dynamics and microphysics remain unclear. This is a very wide topic. 
In this presentation, uh, we will focus on recent investigation of uh, dynamics and microphysics of uh, cumulus clouds and their interaction with surrounding. And to the end, I'll uh, formulate uh, some uh, unsolved uh, problems. So first of all, uh, the question is, uh, how, what is the clouds look like? And there are some uh, simplified representation of uh, convective clouds. I will speak about convective clouds only. Uh, so first representation is uh, uh, convective clouds are like uh, similar to stationary uh, jet, jets or parcels. And you see set or cloud ensemble uh, consisted, uh, consisting of such uh, uh, jets. Uh, this uh, approach was used, for example, by Rakawa and Schubert. Uh, each cloud is represented as a jet and uh, mass flux increases with height uh, because of lateral entrainment of surrounding air, and uh, then uh, all mass uh, this, uh, is detrained at cloud top. Uh, and uh, uh, the average value of as, uh, as any uh, parameter uh, is uh, described by, say, uh, alpha is value um, uh, multiplied by value of uh, in, in the cloud, uh, plus minus min uh, one minus alpha uh, uh, value of uh, e in the environment. Uh, if uh, cloud cover is le much less than one, uh, so the equation is written actually uh, with respect to environment uh, value. And so clouds affect uh, uh, environment uh, with, uh, by detrayment. Uh, so equations that uh, describe uh, uh, such kind of jet is very simple. So this is an uh, uh, equation for mass, dependence of mass flux on height. Uh, e is a, a so-called entrainment rate that is uh, assumed by inversion proportional to radii of, uh, of uh, uh, jet. And this is uh, an equation, uh, uh, classical equation for uh, total water mixing ratio and uh, uh, liquid uh, water potential temperature, which are uh, actually conservative, conservative values. Uh, there is another uh, more accurate uh, uh, representation of uh, convective clouds as starting plum, plume. Starting plume is a combination of head bubble, or this is a, actually parcel, and tail. Uh, tail is a non-stationary uh, jet. Uh, the, this, the difference between this representation and previous one is that uh, uh, here we use uh, uh, equation for uh, uh, vertical velocity. Here is a first equation you see, uh, where the first term, term is uh, buoyancy and the second term uh, related to like friction force related to entrainment. Uh, equations for QT and uh, theta L are uh, the same. Uh, so, uh, mm, uh, height of clouds in this representation and mass fluxes, uh, dependence of mass fluxes on height are determined by lateral entrainment. Uh, what I said that in virtual proportion to the jet or bubble radii. And of course, these uh, representations have significant deficiencies. And uh, clouds are much more complicated than it assumed in this simple cloud uh, models. So first uh, and very important uh, limitation is that assumption of horizontal inhomogeneity uh, that leads to the uh, fact that entrainment uh, immediately affect uh, 
all clouds at the certain level, all all cloud, uh, the entire cloud. Um, and uh, in this uh, uh, relation, uh, I'll uh, want to mention here the cloud top liquid water paradox uh, that uh, using such model, it is impossible to predict at the same time uh, cloud height and liquid water content. Or cloud, uh, cloud top height we predict, in this case, liquid water content uh, takes place, takes uh, no, too, too much, too high, or uh, so it's impossible possible to predict the, these two values at the same time. Uh, and of course, uh, horizontal homogeneity assumption leads to crucial contradiction uh, with observations. And here I uh, uh, illustrate this uh, uh, inhomogeneity using two, only two examples. First example is uh, uh, for, taken from in situ measurements with high frequency from this study. Uh, and this is a uh, uh, flight, uh, this is the values of uh, vertical velocity and uh, liquid water content concentration along uh, the uh, track of airplane. And you see this uh, the vertical velocity uh, line. So we have uh, high vertical velocity updraft in the cloud core center and uh, uh, subsiding shells uh, at the near the edges of, of clouds. On the high right, uh, you see uh, uh, field of uh, vertical velocity, cross-section, horizontal cross-section of vertical velocity calculated uh, in, for uh, cumulus clouds uh, under BOMEX uh, conditions using uh, 10 meter resolution cumulus, uh, 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 10 meter resolution uh, large eddy simulation, actually SEM uh, system uh, atmospheric modeling uh, model we, we used for this simulation. And you see uh, high inhomogeneity of vertical velocity. And here is, uh, in the, the low uh, panel, you see uh, just cross section of vertical velocity along this uh, dashed line. And also we see the same. So high updraft in the center and uh, subsiding shell uh, at cloud edges. Uh, so, uh, 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 formation of cloud inhomogeneity is very important topic in cloud physics. And the motion in clouds are very complicated, so it's reasonable to separate all motions into convective and turbulent. So it's uh, classical, uh, say, expression that velocity is equal to sum. This is a convective uh, scale and turbulent scale. But it's very interesting that uh, each uh, component has its own properties. Convective motions, uh, transport, transport, uh, transport mass. Uh, so cloud updrafts, subsiding shells, uh, and uh, is because of convective uh, component. Uh, then uh, these motions are described uh, using advection equation. Uh, and uh, these motions typically are adiabatic and almost most adiabatic. And this convective motion form actually cloud skeleton, skeleton. At the same time, turbulent motions are stochastic. They describe turbulent diffusion, uh, they describe by turbulent diffusion equation, and uh, these uh, motions do not transport mass and are responsible for mixing and for non adiabatic processes. So, when we are uh, saying about uh, entrainment, so the question is, does entrainment is convective or turbulent? 
So there are two insights of uh, on the nature of entrainment. This uh, classical, uh, say, uh, approach is, uh, of course, uh, convective, uh, assumes convective nature of entrainment. When entrainment uh, increases mass flux, so this entrainment uh, adverts uh, mass, uh, transports mass. Uh, but there is another view that uh, inside that uh, Deroy, uh, when uh, n- n- turbulent nature of uh, entrainment or interaction between cloud and uh, environment is uh, assumed. And to understand this uh, problem uh, better, uh, we uh, d- decided uh, to separate cloud uh, velocity, that uh, field velocity, wind velocity and all other fields uh, simulated by uh, 10 meter resolution uh, into uh, convective and to, to turbulent component. And we used the wavelength uh, filtering techniques. And uh, you see that this field, this field, is now, uh, this is a, after filtering, uh, uh, this is a convective uh, part, and this is a turbulent part below. And uh, in convective uh, uh, field, we uh, see clearly uh, updrafts with cloud core and uh, subsiding shell uh, in the surrounding of this updraft. And uh, in a uh, tur- turbulent field, it indeed uh, looks like uh, 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 random or stochastic. So uh, uh, we would like to, to uh, we wanted to, to see what are the main major properties of turbulent motions in such uh, cumulus uh, clouds. So uh, using uh, uh, wind uh, fields, uh, simulated by uh, SAM with this 10 meter resolution, uh, we calculated uh, s- power spectra of turbulence uh, here uh, and uh, in uh, different direction, in X direction and in Y direction, in horizontal. And you see that first of all, uh, that uh, turbulence uh, in uh, horizontal direction is isotropic, uh, but here you can see this slope. Slope is between uh, uh, minus 5 sort and minus uh, 11 divided by 5. This is uh, actually a range of uh, turbulence and uh, this is, uh, um, uh, we can say that uh, this uh, range, which this range is external turbulence scale is about 70 to 100 meters. And on your right, you can see this uh, power of slopes uh, with height. So you can see that slopes are indeed between minus 5 sort and minus 11 divided by 5. And uh, it is this uh, slope is known as a Morgiano Obokov scaling and uh, related, uh, uh, and uh, it is absorbed when uh, 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 buoyancy force is very, uh, very, uh, plays a very important role. Okay, and uh, our results agree with those obtained uh, in, in high frequency measurements in this uh, study, Convar and Tor. Uh, 2021. Okay, in other properties of uh, cloud turbulence, uh, as we see from uh, simulation, is that uh, turbulent coefficient, turbulent coefficient, uh, turbulent diffusion coefficient increases with height, increases with height. With maximum near cloud top, at maximum is about 25 meter per square uh, meter square per second. And on the, your right, you can see that T dependence, uh, turbulent diffusion coefficient, uh, and this is the height, and this is the time. 
And again, you see this uh, uh, large values, large values near cloud, near cloud top. Okay, now return to entrainment. Uh, you know that uh, according to turbulent law, uh, uh, distance of uh, that moves uh, turbulent fr uh, front uh, because of turbulent diffusion is can be evaluated as uh, root square uh, from uh, k the diffusion turbulent diffusion coefficient and t multiplied by time. Now k is 25 meters square uh, by second. T is about uh, a minute or few minutes. And as a result, we see that L uh, is uh, only a few tens of meters, so very small. So for uh, cumulus uh, cloud with widths of several hundred meters and even more, turbulent front from cloud edges uh, move only uh, by a few tens of meters during the cloud growth. So actually turbulence is responsible for formation of so-called interface zone. And we see this interface zone uh, in, in situ measurements, for example, at Gerber, uh, to to uh, 2008, we see liquid water fraction, uh, liquid water content as a function of distance from uh, cloud uh, edge. And you see that this increase in the liquid water uh, um, uh, content uh, uh, within uh, 30 meters. 30 meters, and then liquid water for, uh, content is nearly constant. Then here is a uh, theory, uh, we, here is a solved equation, so-called equation of uh, diffusion evaporation. We take into account diffusion and evaporation. And uh, also we uh, plot here uh, the dependence of liquid water content uh, uh, on uh, distance. And this is a within cloud, it's outside of cloud. And we see again uh, interface zone co caused by uh, turbulence is uh, 60 meters. And at last, uh, uh, here in 10 meter resolution uh, less LAS simulation with spectral beam microphysics, uh, this is a uh, distance from cloud edge and liquid water content. And we again see this interface zone uh, with uh, uh, widths of uh, 30 to 50 meters. So uh, turbulence uh, forms narrow interface zone, but does, doesn't affect uh, cloud bodies, the major volume of cloud. And at the same time, it's very interesting that this this liquid water content, uh, say, inside of cloud is less than uh, adiabatic value. Uh, so the question is why? Why is cloud is uh, diluted uh, inside at large distances? Now here I just uh, show examples. Uh, that indeed adiabatic fraction is that determined that uh, ratio between liquid water content at the liquid, uh, adiabatic value is about 0 0.3, 0 0.5, uh, at the exception of uh, narrow core. Here is the measurements of uh, Gerber uh, done with extremely high uh, frequency, uh, 1000 hertz. And you see the liquid water content along uh, track uh, of uh, the airplane. And you see here is the adiabatic value, liquid water content adiabatic. And see, you see that uh, only in some very short time or very small distances, liquid water content is close to the adiabatic. And all other uh, volume of cloud has uh, adiabatic uh, fraction or um, about 
half or, or even less. You see, this is the adiabatic uh, liquid water content, and this is a liquid water content measure. So it's uh, half or even less. Uh, the same uh, we see in our uh, 10 meter resolution simulation of uh, uh, convective clouds. These are uh, huge values of adiabatic fraction is low, low values, um, uh, low, low values, uh, uh, less than uh, one, when one is core, uh, cloud core. Okay, uh, so why uh, clouds, the question, why are cumulus clouds diluted much deeper than uh, 60 meter uh, meters inside. Is there a reason uh, other than turbulence? Uh, okay, uh, that uh, we uh, uh, can consider a classical uh, convective entrainment. Uh, we uh, took uh, this uh, equation, for, for example, for vertical velocity that uh, you already uh, saw and calculated using uh, results of uh, simulations, uh, two terms, buoyancy term and uh, entrainment term. Uh, and what we found that buoyancy term, uh, this is a profile, profile, a vertical profile of buoyancy term, uh, is much larger than uh, entrainment. Actually, vertical velocity, both maximum, but uh, average, are determined uh, by uh, buoyancy. So entrainment rate is uh, like doesn't affect uh, uh, vertical velocity. Uh, at least maximum vert vertical velocity. And uh, the same effect we, we got that uh, a classical uh, convective entrainment does not explain liquid water uh, potential temperature profile or total uh, water mixing ratio. So conclusions, uh, so how to explain uh, the liquid water uh, low adiabatic fraction or liquid water content in clouds. So it's not because of turbulence, it's not because of uh, classical convective entrainment. Uh, so uh, we should reconsider uh, cloud, actually cloud dynamics or entrainment in, in, uh, in clouds. And uh, uh, here we may, might be uh, some uh, additional feature can help us to assume uh, the mechanism of uh, entrainment or uh, dynamics of cloud. Please look uh, these two uh, slides. First is uh, liquid water, uh, sorry, vertical velocity uh, is at uh, 30 minutes, field of vertical velocity 30 minutes, and this is the field of vertical velocity at 32 minutes. And this is the black on this second uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, panel. We see this uh, uh, location of cloud uh, at certain minutes. So the same. This is the height. Is this this the same height? And what is the interesting? This is the location of uh, cloud top at 30 minutes, and this is the location of cloud top at 32 minutes. So we see that the, the, uh, that, that cloud uh, top moves like linear front with the same uh, uh, updraft speed. At the same time, uh, vertical velocity here is huge, and here the vertical velocity is negligible. So how it can be explained that uh, cloud top ascend uh, parallel to each uh, itself, uh, like linear front uh, at the di very different vertical velocities. Uh, 
very different vertical velocity here and here, for example. So uh, we uh, now will speak about uh, very important uh, uh, dynamical feature, uh, uh, namely uh, toroidal uh, uh, vortex. This uh, uh, here you can see uh, formation of vortex in a laboratory plume. Uh, this uh, so this jet and the top of uh, jet we see some uh, some formation of uh, uh, of vortex, but it's interesting that within this vortex here we have. Uh, updraft and here is we have downdraft. So this is a uh, uh, like toroidal vortex. And uh, this uh, toroidal vortex were absorbed uh, um, in a laboratory and uh, for using uh, uh, radars. Uh, yes, in, in set of studies. Now we see this steroidal vortex very well uh, using uh, so so actually what what I would like to say is that uh, we mentioned starting plum of uh, head plum uh, so sorry head bubble uh, at, at the top of uh, of cloud so so uh, structure of this uh, bubble or head bubble is uh, just uh, uh, resembles uh, that this bubble resembles a toroidal vortex. And uh, so this toroidal vortex is seen uh, uh, in our uh, 10 meter uh, resolution simulation. So here you see uh, updrafts and here is the downdrafts. Here is the updrafts and here is the downdrafts and then again a tra entrainment. So, so it's uh, and it's very interesting that here this line shows uh, shows uh, sorry shows uh, conversions and this is a divergence this is a divergence and what is the interesting so that uh, no uh, uh, actually entrainment takes place uh, in the uh, say tail of this of this uh, toroidal vortex. Uh, this vortex uh, seen even uh, better when we used wave flat filtering. After wave flat filtering, vertical velocity field looks like this. And this is the center of uh, toroidal vortex. And you see clear this, uh, uh, this uh, you know, existence of this toroidal vortex. Uh, so, uh, why such toroidal vortex uh, uh, forms? There are likely mechanism of uh, toroidal vortex formation. First is a gradient of pressure. Uh, this, uh, uh, again, uh, results of simulations uh, with uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 meter resolution SAM. Uh, here is a positive uh, uh, deviation of pressure. This is a negative deviation of pressure. This uh, formation is very natural. Uh, such uh, uh, locations, uh, such uh, no pressure fluctuation. Uh, if we have some uh, uh, some uh, body moving, so we have increased pressure in pressure, dynamical pressure uh, in front of in front of this uh, body, and uh, ne uh, negative uh, fluctuation uh, in uh, in the ahead. Uh, so we have uh, uh, say pressure gradient, and uh, this is a, um, one mechanism proposed no, uh, possible me mechanism, uh, probably likely mechanism of uh, toroidal vortex formation. This is a, uh, on, on your right, uh, you have another thermodynamic mechanism of uh, uh, this formation of uh, vortex is the following. Here you can see uh, 
that uh, uh, when droplets uh, uh, leave or the, the train from cloud, we have increase in uh, liquid water uh, in uh, relative humidity. It means that droplets, of course, evaporate here uh, near cloud top. Evaporation leads to uh, to uh, decrease in temperature because of evaporation cooling. So as a result, we have uh, the following picture. In the center, we have uh, positive buoyancy because of uh, undiluted core and uh, negative uh, buoyancy uh, at the cloud periphery or vortex periphery. So this is also a possible mechanism of uh, uh, toroidal vortex formation. Now, uh, the question how we see uh, entrainment uh, uh, caused by toroidal vortex. Uh, here we, uh, this is uh, some uh, time instances in simulation of uh, cloud development using uh, this 10 meter resolution uh, model. Uh, here is, uh, we used uh, uh, two tracers. Tracer one initially was located in the blue uh, below 500 meters, tracer two yellow. Uh, initially located from uh, within the layer from uh, 500 to 1,500 meters. And you can see the following. First, at uh, 27 min minutes, uh, we see uh, that uh, cloud is uh, uh, comparatively small, and at uh, edges we see formation of uh, interface zone. Uh, likely because of uh, turbulence that I mentioned uh, uh, before. But then when we, uh, when cloud uh, continue uh, developing, growing, we see clearly formation of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, toroidal vortex. And toroidal, because of toroidal vortex, we see entrainment of tracer inside you do not see any more uh, uh, blue, uh, but it's uh, yellow. It's a uh, it's, uh, 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 tracer penetrates this, um, uh, the cloud. And of course, the, the, the when cloud grows, we see more and more larger and larger area of entrained uh, uh, it's a tracer, or oh, this is the area of entrainment. This is the area of entrainment because of this toroidal vortex. And we see this very well. It is, uh, and uh, 30 minutes, we see even these uh, areas of, uh, say, diluted or uh, uh, air in, within cloud is uh, even larger because of toroidal vortex. It is very interesting that we have here is a narrow uh, uh, core, uh, non-diluted, uh, undiluted. Uh, so we can see that environment uh, air penetrates the cloud due to toroidal uh, vortex. Now, which uh, cloud features uh, does the toroidal vortex explain? Uh, no, first of all, uh, uh, we see that entrainment is driven by toroidal vortex. Uh, it means that by convective scale or coherent motions is not turbulence. Uh, second, uh, uh, entrainment uh, below vortex, what, what we saw is unable uh, to affect uh, cloud uh, development of vertical velocity height and structure. And then the uh, toroidal vortex determines frontal accent of cloud uh, top despite of different vertical velocities. Uh, you see, look, this is the maximum vertical velocity. So here in this, uh, in the core, 
cloud reaches higher, no, higher levels, so high altitude. But then uh, we see diversions, so we see such kind of motions. This uh, this uh, ascending motion, uh, ascending gear just uh, uh, because of divergence move in horizontal direction. So it doesn't depend on this uh, that these velocities, vertical velocity, are lower than in cloud core. Cloud core determine height of cloud and this uh, and uh, at uh, and location of cloud uh, top and mo motion of cloud top. It's very interesting that yes, that cloud top is uh, closely related with existence of cloud core. And this is uh, what, what I wanted uh, to stress uh, again, that uh, mm, uh, toroidal vortex, that what we saw, uh, leads to, to decrease uh, in, uh, in uh, widths of, of uh, cloud uh, core. But uh, existence of cloud core is necessary because here is we have buoyancy that leads to grow, cloud growing. If we have no cloud core, we have no uh, no uh, toroidal vortex, and we have no cloud growth. Uh, the toroidal vortex solves the problem uh, of cloud top liquid water paradox that I mentioned earlier, uh, because uh, cloud top height is determined by cloud uh, uh, core, uh, and in surrounding of cloud core, vertical velocities or liquid water content can be much lower than adiabatic values, uh, uh, but it doesn't matter, uh, the cloud top height is determined by core by adiabatic uh, volume, uh, but, but adiabatic ascent. The same we see in uh, uh, our uh, other simulations when uh, we present here, <coughs> so no, is actually this um, analysis of, uh, of uh, uh, these uh, LAS simulations, uh, here is the height, this is the, the time, is the uh, liquid water content. And we see this uh, 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 accent along this line, along this line, accent maximum velocity. This is the uh, line where, uh, along which um, uh, toroidal vortex ascend. And what we see along this line, uh, we have adiabatic core. This is the adiabatic liquid water content. This is adiabatic core. Okay, so the, another question, uh, why uh, it, uh, adiabatic core is not, uh, uh, often not observed uh, in, observ in, uh, in situ measurements uh, near cloud, uh, uh, cloud top? And you see that, uh, for example, here we see uh, this is uh, what, what we see on this uh, picture is um, vertical profiles of area fraction uh, for four uh, adiabatic fraction ranges. And blue is uh, area, relative area of cloud core actually, adiabatic fraction larger than 0 0.9. And you see that here is a toroidal vortex it decreases uh, uh, widths of, uh, uh, of the core significantly to a few percent. So uh, probability for uh, aircraft uh, to cross this uh, adiabatic core uh, is very low, but uh, its importance is uh, very significant. Uh, it's very interesting that at next stage it's already decay uh, of uh, cloud, we have no adiabatic core any longer. This is, this is 35 minutes. Okay, now we uh, saw that uh, actually uh, adiabatic, uh, so sorry, 
uh, uh, Toridal vortex creates a radial profile of uh, adiabatic fraction. And uh, what we found that uh, droplet side distribution are closely related to adiabatic fraction. Here you can see uh, uh, size distribution at three uh, levels. Uh, in the uh, zones of uh, cloud core, uh, intermediate adiabatic fraction is most or major cloud body and cloud periphery. This is the interface zone. And what we see from uh, simulations that, uh, that in the core, uh, all size distribution are very similar. In the many points of cloud core, uh, size distribution narrow and, uh, no, and concentration, is, uh, you can see this is a very si similar uh, structure. Here is the intermediate uh, adiabatic fraction is just shows that uh, some dilution of this uh, size distribution amplitude are lower, but uh, at the uh, cloud edge we have di very different uh, size distributions uh, with uh, largely white. And please pay attention that uh, uh scales are very different so here is the four uh, this is a uh, four and this 40 so it's 10 10 times large so it's actually small uh, small values of, of uh, small values here but uh, uh, but uh, the, uh, shape uh, depends on uh, uh, history of uh, uh, parcels air parcels if they enter clouds, uh, they have uh, the con low concentration and uh, typically wide spectrum, and uh, if uh, the parcels uh, move uh, from uh, cloud to cloud periphery, uh, they contain, they contain larger, larger droplets. Uh, okay, very interesting uh, that uh, uh, in uh, observations we have uh, uh, similar uh, size distribution. This is uh, uh, from Convert uh, 2021. Uh, the, this is the size distribution in cloud core, and this is in cloud edges. Very similar to simulation. So uh, now uh, mm, I uh, uh, want uh, to uh, say how to uh, analytically find this uh, hill vortex, uh, no, toroidal vortex. First of all, we, we approximate uh, a toroidal vortex by uh, hill vortex, that which is simplest uh, uh, toroidal vortex. There is a se several sets of uh, uh, toroidal vortexes, and hill vortex is the uh, simplest. Here is uh, like uh, it looks like it's just spheroid, spheroidal spheroid uh, with uh, internal circulation and uh, outside circulation. Uh, and uh, we try to find this vortex uh, in simulations, uh, uh, in uh, of, uh, identify this vortex within uh, simulations, uh, the uh, LAS simulations. First of all, uh, we need to, to identify location and accent, accent uh, velocity. So uh, I showed you already height, uh, time, dependence of maximum of vertical velocity. This is the maximum. And we assume, of course, that uh, this uh, toroidal vortex has uh, maximum uh, of, um, uh, velocity in the center. So this is uh, actually trajectory uh, in this coordinate system, trajectory of, uh, uh, of uh, toroidal vortex, of hill vortex. So we know maximum velocity. And this on the, your, right, your right, you see this uh, 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 maximum velocity uh, within toroidal vortex. Now, uh, the um, accent velocity 
of toroidal vortex is accent velocity of point with uh, vertical velocity, wave vertical velocity is maximum. Uh, so so uh, this uh, point accent with maximum velocity with, uh, with uh, just according to slope of this line, we can uh, uh, calculate uh, velocity uh, with which uh, this point with maximum velocity accent. And this is a, on your right. This is a vertical velocity, um, uh, and we are, uh, identify. Or s suppose this is the vertical velocity of ascent of hilt vortex. And what is the interesting that this point, blue point, is a theoretical theoretical velocity. Uh, so 0.4 uh, of velocity maxima, maximum. So we see uh, comparatively good uh, good agreement. And now uh, uh, we need to identify or to de determine uh, uh, radius of uh, sizes of uh, hill vortex. This is uh, was done uh, also by fitting of uh, this is a radial dependencies of vertical velocity and this is a radial uh, uh, dependence in uh, of vertical velocity in hill vortex and uh, we uh, using root mean square uh, did fitting uh, and actually this size where we have uh, from uh, maximum updraft to uh, maximum downdraft where the subsiding shell, we uh, assume that this is the radius of hill vortex. Uh, so now we know uh, the location of hill vortex and size of hill vortex and expressions for hill vortex, analytical expression. And using this analytical expression, we calculated thermodynamical features uh, of uh, uh, of cloud, uh, and here you can see vertical profile of different between uh, for uh, total uh, water mixing uh, ratio between cloud core and environment. And this is uh, according to same model, and this according to uh, approximation by hill vortex. Uh, the same uh, uh, for liquid water potential temperature. This is a, uh, the difference between core and environment. This is a for SAM simulation, uh, and uh, and this is a for approximation of by hill vortex. Now uh, we also uh, 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 obtained analytical uh, expression for liquid water content and for adiabatic fraction within. Uh, uh, hill vortex. We assume that uh, no, uh, that uh, we have toroidal vortex in the form of hill vortex, and uh, that uh, updrafts and downdrafts within hill vortex are adiabatic. And got some uh, expression. I'm not going to uh, to de describe this formula in, in more detail. I just want to say that here in uh, you can see radial dependence of uh, adiabatic fraction here is a within cloud and this is a, as within hill vortex actually but this is a within cloud and this is the outside of cloud so it is in surrounding and here you can see uh, the z re, uh, r we, within that, uh, this normalized, uh, normalized. Uh, this is the hill vortex, normalized coordinate hill vortex with radius uh, equal to one. Uh, you can see here is a high adiabatic uh, fraction, and this is a low, actually zero adiabatic fraction. Uh, and this, this is the uh, figures uh, are related to different heights. And uh, you can see, uh, actually, this is uh, 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 is a lines of uh, uh, 
uh, streamlines. And so, so you can see that uh, here the condensation is the evaporation, the condensation, the evaporation, and such kind of we have uh, some kind of uh, uh, convective kind of mixing caused by uh, toroidal vortex. And average the value of adiabatic fraction is what, from analytical expression, is 0.4. That is reasonably in good agreement with different, no, with measurements. Gerber 2000 or Schmeissner 2015. Okay, now just conclusions. Uh, so, uh, uh, convective and turbulent motions, and uh, we uh, separated motions into convective, or coherent, and stochastic turbulent motions. Convective motions uh, create skeleton uh, and represent adiabatic processes. Turbulent intensity increases toward uh, cloud top, maximum uh, coefficient of turbulent di uh, diffusion is 7 tenths of meter square per, uh, per second. Convective motions uh, res uh, uh, resembling starting pl uh, plum consisting of head bubble and non-stationary tail. Now, what is the uh, conclusion related to cloud environment interaction? Turbulence is responsible for formation of narrow uh, interface zone at cloud edge with strong gradient of liquid water content and droplet concentration. Cloud dilution uh, uh, within major cloud volume is caused by convective or coherent motions. And uh, the conclusion concerning toroidal vortex. The toroidal vortex play dominating role in formation of dynamics and microphysics of clouds. Uh, then uh, the toroidal vortex is responsible for entrainment at distance larger than uh, several, uh, even 100 met meters inside of clouds. Uh, the toroidal vortex is responsible for cloud depths and for frontal growth of cloud top and turbulent, uh, uh, turbulent mixing is intense in cloud top. Significant fraction uh, of this uh, moisture uh, here descends in subsiding shells and penetrates to cloud. So relative humidity of entrained uh, air can be high. And uh, what is the last uh, conclusion actually is that even the simplest uh, model of toroidal vortex, like hill vortex, leads to reasonable results, indicating dominating uh, uh, role of convective scale and adiabatic processes in clouds. Okay, uh, of course, there are uh, unsolved problems, uh, unsolved problems, interaction of turbulent and convective motions, because uh, air mixed uh, by turbulence is then transported by convective motions. It's so it's very interesting process as the interaction of turbulence and uh, convection. Uh, then uh, it's uh, of course it's better model of toroidal vortex is required and detailed balance uh, of forces causing formation of uh, and affect sides of toroidal vortex is necessary. No effects of wind shear is also necessary to investigate in more detail. It's many others. So thank you for uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you so much for this uh, very fantastic talk. Uh, uh, maybe that first we should take the questions from the audience and uh, others. Uh, Subrata? Yeah, there are there are two questions, so I already post them in the meeting chat. So, professor, you can find there. Yeah. Uh, should I read? Yeah, there are two questions. Yeah, you yeah. please please read it out for him. Yeah. So the first question is, 
from me that measuring the convective cloud cover can we measure the raindrop size Uh, sorry. Uh, measuring the convective cloud cover, can we measure the raindrop let me, size? Let me let me explain to explain that whether measuring cloud cover, whether we can have a measure of the raindrop size. Yes, yeah. I suppose that uh, there is a. Uh, 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 a relationship uh, between uh, uh, cloud cover and uh, structure of uh, toroidal vortex, because it seems to me uh, that toroidal vortex determine not only height of uh, cloud, but also width of clouds. And uh, uh, because uh, you know, uh, negative buoyancy is uh, formed because of evaporation, uh, and so so where is uh, 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 and uh, because toroidal vortex uh, determines uh, uh, adiabatic fraction and uh, that closely related to droplet size. I suppose that some information can be derived from uh, cloud cover. There is another question. Yeah, the second question is, does shallow cloud have such vortices or it is a feature of deep cloud? Uh, uh, I suppose that uh, yes, uh, that uh, uh, I mean convective clouds. Convective clouds. Uh, supposedly, uh, I spoke about small clouds as a trade wind, but uh, uh, you measured uh, larger clouds, deep convective, and this uh, we see at the same features, at the same very similar features. Might be the difference is the following that very large uh, convective clouds can contain several toroidal vortices or some uh, but uh, small clouds uh, contain only one but actually the um, uh, dynamics is, should be the same so it's not because of uh, turbulent mixing it's not turbulence is uh, uh, say uh, toroidal uh, vortices that uh, are larger and have non, uh, so actually coherent structure, no, non, uh, it's co convective uh, nature, not, not turbulent. Yeah. Let, let us, uh, let, are there other questions? Uh, no, in the chat mm -hmm. box there are so, only two questions. Any, any of you have questions? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hello, Professor Ken. This is Mahen. Uh, yeah, a very interesting and nice talk. Uh, I have one qu uh, query here. Like uh, here, written there, uh, the cloud tops are determined by adiabatic core. Now, this adiabatic, I mean, uh, is it related to the scale of um, that uh, adiabatic core? I mean, the length of the adiabatic core, or of, of or do you mean that if uh, greater uh, updraft or stronger updraft will have more adiabatic core and will have uh, stronger, I mean, uh, higher cloud top. Uh, what I, I uh, try to uh, to say uh, uh, that uh, it's very interesting, uh, no, maybe a, a, a feature that uh, to create a, a toroidal vortex, we need cloud core. Uh, but uh, because uh, we need uh, strong buoyancy in the center. Uh, so at the decaying uh, stage, uh, uh, we have no cloud core, but supposedly no, no toroidal vortex. Uh, yes, so, and uh, the cloud top height is determined by uh, actually buoyancy in the center, in the cloud, uh, undiluted or low diluted uh, uh, air. 
there. Okay, thank okay. you. There is one more question. Uh, Mahin, do you have more questions? There is one more question from the audience. Yeah, does polluted environment affecting these vortices? Does polluted environment affecting these vertices? Sorry? Hello. Yeah. Professor Kane, uh, the question is whether polluted environment will affect these vertices. Uh, uh, please, uh, can you re repeat your question, Sarah? Uh, yeah, whether uh, polluted environment, air pollution can affect this uh, uh, Yes, uh, now uh, I suppose that uh, um, uh, Eitan, the uh, school now is uh, doing uh, simulations uh, in Weizmann Institute, uh, such uh, simulations with different uh, aerosol uh, concentrations. And uh, uh, yes, we see uh, some eff uh, no, effect because uh, um, uh, aerosols affect uh, droplet size. Uh, droplet size. Uh, I suppose also very important, maybe even more important, effect is uh, instability or cape instability determines vertical maximum vertical velocities. Now, of course, aerosols affect maximum ve velocity, but not so strongly as, as just uh, instability of the atmosphere. Uh, yes, and this is uh, actually, I suppose, the main mechanism that determines no uh, 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 cloud size uh, and uh, cloud uh, and maximum velocity. Yeah, there are there are two more questions from audience. Yeah, this is uh, regarding uh, how does the toroidal vertices uh, interact with the terrain height or uh, uh, or with the different surface settings like land and ocean. How does the surface characteristics affect the toroidal vertices? Uh, maybe uh, co uh, communication not, not so clear. Can you yeah. repeat? The, how does the, toro the surface conditions like the um, terrain or land surface characteristics or affect the toroidal vertices? Yes, it's a, it's a, uh, Questions. Uh, I said that uh, there are many, many questions to, to investigate. Yeah. Of course, uh, first uh, problem is uh, wind shear. Yeah. And uh, the land, uh, say, uh, uh, topography is also can affect. Uh, our main goal was to understand um, the mechanism of uh, uh, of uh, interaction between uh, cloud and environment, and what is the mechanism that determine uh, uh, at the same time high vertical velocity and comparatively low uh, liquid water content. Yes. And this is a mechanism, so classical entrainment, to, no, classical scheme of entrainment I cannot explain this. And of course, turbulence can also cannot, turbulent mixing also cannot explain this effect. I think uh, Barry has a question. He has raised his hand. He Barry, his hand. please. Yeah, hi, Alex. Um, I'm wondering, this is very interesting work regarding clouds and the actual physical processes in clouds, but how would we apply this to actually simulating clouds at one kilometer grid spacing or something like that. Can we, because right now tur there's just resolved circulations and turbulence. There's no additional process that, that you described in regular operational models or models that don't 
explicitly model turbulence? Yes, uh, you, you know, it's a, a difficult actually uh, question. We used uh, uh, high resolution, uh, namely to, to explain fine, fine features, fine mechanism of, uh, of this, uh, uh, fine mechanism of this uh, problem. Uh, and uh, uh, as regards to group re resolution, we need to, to use some kind of parameterizations. Uh, parameterizations that don't describe uh, the, 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 these uh, effects. Uh, yes, uh, supposedly uh, uh, this, this is necessary to, to think about this more. Yeah, there is uh, another question uh, from uh, uh, Sudarshan, please. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, this is Sudarshan from IITM. And actually, this is very, uh, I will say this is fantastic talk and a lot of uh, classic information and things. Actually, I work on very similar topics, so I just am uh, very much interested. So I have one question regarding toroidal vortex. Uh, how this uh, motion can be related to uh, super adiabatic doublet growth? I mean, in, in some uh, literature, we have seen that uh, super adiabatic droplet can form at the uh, periphery of the clouds. But in your presentation, what you have shown, that toroidal motion can be much deeper. So can this, uh, like, super adiabatic droplet can form in much, uh, like, near to cloud core? Or, I mean, how this can be related? Professor Kane, did you get the question? Oh, I, I'm thinking that uh, maybe it's uh, 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 can you formulate the the, the question uh, again? Yeah, he is uh, he is wanting to ask about the presence of super adiabatic uh, droplets in the toroidal vertices. Uh, yes, so. Uh, I understand. Uh, so, uh, in in my opinion, uh, it's, uh, proce adiabatic processes play very, very, very important role, uh, extremely uh, important role. Uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> so, the the question is uh, uh, just uh, no uh, height from which we, we can calculate uh, the, the updrafts, uh, different uh, uh, updrafts, uh, no, cloud base, diff different uh, levels. Uh, uh, so in my opinion, that uh, processes are largely uh, no, adiabatic. Uh, look, uh, it's uh, liquid, liquid water content uh, actually, in, within clouds, within clouds, uh, uh, humidity of uh, actually 100 percent, very close to 100 uh, percent, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, even larger. Uh, in this case, uh, type of uh, turbulent mixing, uh, say uh, homogeneous or inhomogeneous, it doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, actually, it is uh, just being that we have some some horizontal no, some, uh, mixing between uh, at small scales, but then uh, the problem is how this air volumes are transported within within clouds at larger distances, and this is uh, because of uh, say no convective scale processes and convective scale processes are, are largely adiab adiabatic. Of course, it's necessary to take into account some deviation from adiabatic adiabaticity, yes. Yeah, thank you. Actually, I have uh, one more question. Uh, can this uh, toroidal motion be reversed when there is a downdraft present at cloud top? I mean, direction can be reversed in uh, situation when there is a downdraft at the top of the cloud. Yes, yes, of course, Daldroth as well. Yes, uh, conve conve convection motions or 
what I try to sh to show that uh, conversion is only also updraft and downdraft. Uh, I didn't uh, sh show you this in another interesting way, problem uh, how uh, decay of, of of clouds takes place. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Some uh, we have uh, formation of a huge uh, uh, gravitational waves within inversion layers. It's a very very interesting uh, processes that uh, require a special um, uh, analysis. Uh, but uh, I, I was speaking today about only about developing stage. Thank you. May I ask some questions? Subrata. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, I would like to know if uh, see the at the cloud base, the uh, updrafts are uh, possibly centered from the boundary layer eddies that are penetrating uh, in the cloud base. So mm -hmm. the preferential, um, um, like uh, the adiabatic cores, are uh, kindly uh, centered around these um, penetrating eddies from the boundary layer, uh, I suppose. And so probably we have to indeed uh, pay attention to the boundary layer um, vertical motions that are that are indeed key in determining the um, the adiabatic cores. Where exactly those adiabatic cores may likely? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Occur. yeah. So I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. So, so basically, we have to in a in a large scale model, for example, we have to we have to uh, get that right. But uh, that is dependent basically on also on the resolution, right? Yeah. So the way. But uh, in in large scale models, uh, usually people uh, assume some distribution of uh, vertical yeah. velocity at cloud base. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, it's not uh, it's a very important. Uh, yeah. Yes, how uh, what is the distribution is? Yeah, we have, uh, actually you talked about some very important aspects uh, on the vertical velocities. The maximum vertical velocities; those are indeed you are uh, considering as the center of the uh, toroidal vertices. Vertices, so it's uh, actually it's a vertical. Uh, distribution uh, also is uh, kind of determining where exactly the uh, eventually the precipitation might form, right? Yeah, yes, of course. So okay. it is in a large scale model, probably it is more important to determine that uh, um, vertex uh, positions maybe, maybe are uh, defined with a um, parameterization possibly. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, uh, <clears throat> supposedly we have uh, several scales uh, of uh, toroidal vortexes. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, but uh, what I I saying that uh, say all small vortexes are moving within this yeah. one large the toroidal vortex, uh, at least uh, in this uh, in this uh, small cloud, in large cloud, maybe a lot of uh, vortices. But this is uh, um, actually mechanism, you no, know, of uh, that is with scales larger than say several tens of meters. So, so also, do you think that it is that the microphysical effects are indeed interacting with this? Like, so, yeah, so yes, yes. basically, that is kind of the driving force for these vertices, right? Yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, very important, of course, to know to look uh, is what what I uh, spoke today is. Uh, uh, non precipitating clouds. Uh, so precipitating clouds, uh, we can uh, know, uh, look how it's uh, say loading or precipitation affects uh, the, this circulation. It's also very very interesting uh, topics. A lot of uh, topics, but 
what I wanted to say. Also, is that also radiation. Pay attention on, on, on the, to pay attention on the importance of this toroidal vortex, but not just uh, or turbulence or or standard uh, say jet with uh, uh, with entrainment from from uh, surrounding. Just, just we have uh, such. Yes. So, so actually, each uh, you know parcel moves such kind of motions. Such tra track is uh, mm -hmm. quite say complicated. This uh, volume can be inside, then outside, then inside, outside. It's, uh, yes. And, and then this is a. Uh, so it it may be get evaporation and then uh, yes exactly exactly so there are different cycles that are happening this actually the, the creates uh, say yeah. a radial distribution of uh, liquid water content and uh, adiabatic fraction yeah i i was also wondering about uh, this uh, cloud top entrainment uh, effects uh, and how does it uh, relate with, relate with this uh, Mm, toroidal vertex, vertex interactions uh, that that will also be important, right? Yes, it's a, a cloud top. Uh, uh, there is a known idea of mm, tumor yeah. that uh, mixing takes place in the vertical direction, but not in the horizontal. But recent uh, you know, experiments or simulations show that in the recent uh, observation, uh, including your experiment uh, results, show that uh, as that uh, uh, entrainment takes place in in the horizontal, so it's we have lateral uh, entrainment, and that uh, properties of uh, uh, properties of entrained ear is close at the certain uh, level is close to no uh, um, within cloud is close to properties of uh, air no, at the same height so in the in the level of uh, measurements uh, and uh, it's a very good very nice explanation of this uh, in case of um, uh, toroidal vortex uh, look, uh, first uh, cloud uh, grows, and uh, we have uh, mixing uh, and uh, say cooling at uh, some near cloud top. But then this air moves, uh, and um, then cloud continue growing, and the air uh, moves uh, and rem actually remains at the same height. Because downdrafts are uh, much sm uh, smaller than updrafts, so uh, cloud moves up and to air mixed the air remains at the same levels. But uh, uh, now it's uh, at, uh, no at the sides of cloud, and then these volumes entrain uh, entrain uh, clouds uh, from sides. So we have. Not entrainment from above, but entrainment yeah. uh, this and then yeah. entrainment. This way we have uh, we keep properties of cloud of uh, air near cloud top. Yeah. So so this is also a very uh, good example of effects of um, of toroidal vortex. Yeah. So it uh, solves this problem instead of vertical uh, mixing and pollock diagram, uh, we, we have uh, in horizontal, uh, entrainment horizontal direction. So you, you mentioned that the cloud top uh, liquid water paradox is, uh, is, can be addressed with this. Uh, yes, paradox. cloud top then moves uh, to, yeah. to the sides. And yeah. then uh, enters. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Professor Kane. And is there any further questions, discussions, and all? Yeah, no, ma'am. There is no further questions in YouTube. Okay. okay.
think uh, 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 we we all profusely thank you and uh, namaste uh, we now i think we will uh, stop now okay. i was very glad glad thank, thank you, you very so much. much and we have a lot to learn from this i think uh, everyone will have a look at the presentation and thank you thank, thank you professor thank you very much for organization of such nice set set of set of lessons yeah and, we continue continue yes. and uh, thank you i hope for uh, future collaboration yes thank you yeah. thank you um bye okay. bye uh, padmakar please